have to die. Y'all been reading the Exodus and look, you see all the sacrifices. I would have been like, Lord, just take me. I'm going to offer this bull, I'm repenting, I'm my heart right, I'm good, take me now. That was a lot of work. That was a lot of stitch. That was a lot of blood. That was a lot of sacrifice. And think about it. Think about Dick and, Dick and Kevin. All they were doing still was just a type of shout. It could not take the place. See, it was only covering what Jesus was coming to take away. You like all that blood and it just covered. It still did not have the power to remove sin. So death reigned from Adam to Moses. Now Moses gets the word and now Moses tells the word to the people and they agree. So now God implements a, a process where if people miss it, they can get forgiveness. Yeah. So they don't have to die in their sin. Yes. I have provided a way for them to uh, release their sin into animals and kill the animal and repent and still be okay with me. Uh -huh. But that was just a type, it was just a shadow. It could not be uh, permanently dealt with until Jesus died on the cross. Yes. And so Adam, the, it's amazing that Paul say. Even though your sinning is not the same sin that Adam did. <laughs> because sometimes we seem to get a little indignant when people sin differently than how we sin. Yes. And, and the scriptures say that they, they didn't sin like Adam's direct disobedience, but they still were in sin. Why? Because they were born in sin and shaking in iniquity. Uh -huh. And so sometimes we'll be dealing with something and we'll get so upset with people because they're dealing with something that we overcame. Wow. Or they'll say, oh, they shouldn't be battling this. But, but you're battling something. Yes. And you're forgetting where mercy reached down and pulled you out of it. And so sometimes people just get an attitude with people that sin sinning differently than they're saying. Man, how to be ashamed. Well, what should you be ashamed of? What, what are you doing that's missing the mark? Because sin means to miss the mark. Yes. So what are you doing to miss the mark? And so why are you so busy hating on people because they sin it in a different fashion? You're still missing it. Get it right. Get it right. I'm the, when you were gossiping yesterday. Let's see. I ain't seen it. You ain't prayed all week. Prayerlessness is a sin. Yes. I ain't sending it out. You ain't read your Bible. The Bible says study. That's the, it's commanded. It's not a subject. Not study your Bible. It's sin. Yes. See, we're worried about the sins of commission. Things that we do. What about the sins of omission? The stuff we don't do. That is required of us. Y'all yeah. not talking yeah. up in here. See, there are, two, there are two categories of sin. There are sins of omission and there are sins of commission. Some people ain't committing, but they omit it. Quiet. You ain't went out and did all that old stuff, but you ain't doing your new stuff. That one talk to me. <laughs> and so Paul is saying they ain't sin like Adam sin, but they sin it. And so death reigned from Adam to Moses. So because when you have truth, you no longer have an excuse. See, you, you, the, the, see, that's the that's that's the danger in a house like this because you cannot hear the truth and go back out there and say I didn't know. Yeah. Because you're going to be held accountable yes. for that which you heard. Yes. And so when you're in a house of truth, you can't say I didn't know. No, you heard. Yes. You know, sin will send you to hell. There's no excuse. Yeah. Yes. It's like oh, I didn't know. Yes, you did. You heard. It. And so. Once truth is, is, is present, then there is no excuse. Once, listen, once truth is presented to me, then I become accountable for the truth that I know. Yes. I can't say, oh, well, I didn't know. No, you heard it. So once you hear, you're accountable to it. I know. Yes. I, can't, I can't stay there. We're, we're talking about Jesus, the last Adam. Go to Luke 16, 23. Let's get ready to get good at it's going to get good work. <laughs> Luke 16, 23. Okay, let me get there. I know it didn't get 
taking that one back? Okay. Well, let me, let me set this up because I'm going I'm to start at 23, but I'll just set the other verses up. Okay, there was a, a rich man that had it going on. And then there was a poor man named Lazarus that laid at the rich man gate begging for bread. He just wanted some crumbs that fell for the table. And the Bible says that the dogs came and licked the wounds of the, of the beggar Lazarus, right? And so we pick up here. Uh, when Lazarus died, and guess what happened? He was carried by the angels into the bosom of Abraham. And then the Bible says that the rich man also died. You, you notice the contrast between the life of a believer and a sinner? The believer is escorted first class into the presence of God. So we pick up in verse 23. In Sheol, or hell, where it was torment, the rich man looked up. So where did the rich man go? Amen. Now let me ask you a question, because there are some ignorant preachers out here that are teaching there is no hell. Yeah. Jesus is telling the story. Mm -hmm. This is not a parable. No, not. Why? Because anytime, let me look up y'all with a little um, exegesis or, or hermeneutics 101. Anytime there is a name mentioned, it is not a parable. It is a true story. Parables involve um, nameless people. Right. 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 Events. But when Jesus gives a specific name, it is not a parable, it is a true story. Right. So, in hell, where there was torment, the rich man looked up and saw Abraham far away. Now, is Abraham a real person? Yes. Okay, so this is not fictitious, right? Mm -hmm. Abraham was far away, and Lazarus at his side. Mm -hmm. This is the rich man looking over there. He called out, Father Abraham, take pity on me, and send Lazarus just to dip the tip of his finger in water to cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. Now, who's telling the story? Jesus. Jesus. Somebody said a rich man. No, he did. Jesus telling the story. <laughs> so, this is a true story. Okay? Where is the rich man? What's going on in his body in hell? He's burning. What does he want? So in hell you have feelings, you have emotions, you have intellect. Yes. You don't burn up in hell. You burn throughout eternity. Yes. Listen, people in hell know everything that they do when they were here. People in hell can identify people in hell. The same way people in heaven know people in heaven. You're not going to get to heaven and your grandma not going to know you. She's going to know you. She's going to wrap arms around you. This rich man was very cognizant of the fact that that is Abraham and that is Lazarus. He didn't lose his, his, his senses. He didn't lose his memory. His cognitive ability was not lost in hell. Hell is very real and you are operating in the same uh, intensity in your emotions and your intellect that you did in earth. Probably it's more heightened. Because you don't have a flesh to limit you. Okay, let me... So he wants him to tip his finger in some water and come and cool his tongue because he's in agony in the fire. 25. However, Abraham says, son, remember that when you were alive, you got the good things while he got the bad. But now he's in consolation here while you are the one in agony. 26. Yet that isn't all. Between you and us, a deep rift has been established so that those who would like to pass from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross uh, over from there to us. And then he starts saying, well, send Lazarus to my brothers. I got five brothers. I don't want them to come to this place. What is that telling me? That there is a sense of pity in, he in hell. People are remorseful, but it's too late. So he is now concerned about his brothers. He don't want them to come to this God uh, forsaken place called hell. So he's saying, send Lazarus uh, to my, my brothers, my five brothers, and, and so they don't have to come here and experience this. And then Abraham says, and, and I, I, let me slow down a little bit. I always wonder why Abraham said there's a great gulf between us. And the people that are here cannot pass over to you and you can't come over here. 
And so let me set this up. I gotta slow myself down. I'm getting a little excited. Okay, so just imagine this this separation, this divide, this aisle, right? So on one side you had paradise. On the other side you had hell. People were burning and tormented, but these people were chilling and enjoying life. They were being comforted in, in, in close proximity to Abraham. That's what Abraham bosom in close proximity. So these people live a good life. These people can see what's going on. They're like, man, they over there playing place. I'm sorry, it wasn't no place. <laughs> they were like, man, they over there eating, eating good, living, living life. I mean, enjoying life, playing it, and we over here in torment. And so I often wonder, why would, Ab why would Abraham say, nobody over here can pass over there? I'm like, why would you want to go over there? Why would I want to go to hell when I'm in paradise? But I started thinking about something. Because you can identify those, you may have family over there that you try to sneak some water to. Okay. You got me going to talk. You may have some family over there that you might want to try to hurry up and get over there and comfort them and get back. Because love is powerful. But God made it sure that the, that the gulf was so great that there was no crossing. You can't mix kingdoms. We can't come over there. You can't come over here. You got what you deserve. And he's getting what he deserves. Now let me have yeah. The place of Abraham's bosom was the was paradise. It was the place that all the, the righteous dead went to. They didn't go to hell because they died believing in Yahweh. No, get this. No, Jesus had not come. But I told you that the Old Testament saints were saved just like we're saved by believing in God and doing what God said. And so now they're in paradise. Mm -hmm. Now, God, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Um, let me see. Let me see what my next scripture. I, I, I don't want. I'm a, I want to teach this to you guys. Uh, go to Ephesians chapter four, verse eight. Some of you may be getting ready to learn something. Some of you may already know, um, but this is good information. Yeah. Ephesians chapter four. And we're going to go down to the eighth verse. Are you there? Amen. Verse eight says, this is why it says, after he went up to the heights, talking about heaven, he led captivity captive, right? Yes. And he gave gifts unto men. Verse nine. Now this phrase, he went up. What can it mean if not that he first went down into the lower parts of the earth? Mm 